many, many years ago, in 92, 93, I don't recall it, many pounds ago, Ron Perlman said we should try and adapt this. Uh, he was, we were talking about Elmer Gantry, oh. and he was talking about uh, the beautiful uh, job Burt Lancaster does. And Ron does a pretty mean Burt Lancaster imitation. <laughs> and then he said, I would love to play a character. Again, the only other character that has those sort of spiritual, charlatan, charming, carny guy, he said, it, or tent revival is this character, Stanton Carlyle on Nightmare Alley. And I read the, the book, then watched the movie in that order. I thought the book was fascinating. We, of course, <laughs> Ron turned out to know as much about the movie business as I did at, at 28. <laughs> and we went to Fox, and Fox said, it's a library title. Get away from here. <laughs> and they didn't validate our parking, even. <laughs> and, then, and then many, many years later, the novel stayed in my mind. And many years later, uh, Kim and I were looking for something to do together. And Kim said, what about Nightmare Alley? And I thought, well, that's fantastic, because we can do a complete an exercise in complete freedom. No one's ever gonna make it, because it's absolutely, we knew the ending was gonna be brutal, we wanted to do this and that. I said, it's a fantastic thing. We wrote it in complete freedom, and then we made it. <laughs> you, so much has been subverted within film noir. I think there's a general perception that film noir is a certain way, and there's so many different types of noir. I mean, you could see you, uh, uh, Ulmer's, uh, Detour, you could watch uh, Lever to Heaven. You know, they're so different. I mean, it's just the work you put in to, to believe that you're the character, right? Um, and I just had the blessing of being able to work with so many incredible actors in this movie. Uh, that, uh, and, and I had the luxury of some time to prep. Um, and then, you know, you just put all the work in and, and just hope that, uh, that something occurs and then you can just receive it and then stand it just uh, is there and then you can just uh, just sort of react to all these wonderful people. Constantly, we were amazed. I would love to say everything, was, everything happened mm. to us. And it was, that's the miracle. That's the, I'm 57 and this movie revealed to me things and ways of making film that I didn't know. Wow. You know, and it's that partnership with all the actors, that discovery of truth before style. Respecting style as part of the storytelling, but finding those moments, it was beautiful. You know, my first point of connection was obviously wanting to work with Guillermo. And so when, when he comes to you with anything, you say yes, and then the character sub is secondary in a way, to, to the experience of working with him. <laughs> well, one gets what they want, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> and it ain't me. Really? <laughs> Who? Which one? I think you might get what you I mean. You know, you, you live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Another oh scar I don't in the neck. Do you want that? I don't know. <laughs> um, you I mean the the thing that the main thing is he's he's just so lost, you know. So he doesn't even know that that's somebody that's a match or anything. I mean, he's just like he says to her in the beginning. She says, you know, what what do I want? You know, to be found out just like everybody else. You know, that's just sort of what he wants, I think. And um, and he gets it in the end. It's a happy ending for Stan. Mm -hmm. It it is actually, yeah. in an odd way, it really is. Well, what we did discuss beautifully, and the movie revealed to us each time, it was the whole movie is a prologue for the last two minutes, right? really. And, and the most sacred act and most important act in everybody's life is the moment you reveal yourself to you, where you find out who you are. It's the most astounding moment of drama in every life. Mm. For some people, it happens in the last two minutes before they expire. For others, it, it is revealed in an opportunity, in an obstacle, in a relationship. And for us, it was, it was about knowing Stan and loving Stan, mm -hmm. not judging him. And then that moment of revelation, that final shot, mm. uh, we, we were looking at it as the Mount Everest and we said, we talked to Miles and the three producers agreed. We said, we're gonna carry that set <laughs> through every week of shooting until we nail it. We're gonna shoot Tim Blake Nelson's side and we're gonna shoot this side 15, 60 times, whatever we need. Take one. Whoa. Wow. Take one. The way she maps the character and the way she went at tracing Molly, we didn't, we wanted, we didn't want it an ingenue. 
and the past she has, and every character has a scar. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, hopefully, I have a good moral compass. <laughs> Maybe, hopefully. But, I, yeah, I, I don't know. It's weird. So we made this so long ago at this point, and, um, you know, we had to come back because of COVID, because the whole world shut down, and I had a baby in between then. So yes. literally, like, when we came back to finish the film, like, I had an out of body experience. Like I, it's like I, w <laughs> I can't even really remember it. It's like I, you know, a part of me wasn't there, and so it's such a weird thing to talk about. Like I just, um, I don't fully even remember it. The thing, what what he says is a man that needs forgiveness, and I think that that's what we all need urgently, forgiveness. I mean, it's so so. It's, I think it's a character that, hopefully, you are following him one way as the victim and there's that horrible turn when he says i've hurt him and you don't see it coming nor does it stand mm. but it's uh, no no character in this movie is just one color they're all com uh, composites of many emotions and many positions as as a human being should be huh. i believe and guillermo was uh, he kept pushing me to be uh, you know, darker, darker, darker. Mm. And uh, we got there in that moment, uh, the God moment. And I'm glad because Pete had a realization that was his epiphany and that he'd never told anybody. Mm. And he needed to tell somebody that. And here was the opportunity. And it was kind of his gift that he could give to this wandering soul as much as he had been a wandering soul too. I mean, they all are in the film. Yeah. And it, there's an interdependency in that family community. No, but but we did discuss the, the we yeah. discussed what is her final monologue, and we said this is her final monologue. Just shut up, yeah. you know. Yeah. Have you done a screen slap before, Rooney? Uh, yeah, I'm sure. I think probably a couple of times. And have you received one like hers? Uh, well, I mean, she really hit me. <laughs> yeah, that was a real hit. Really? <laughs> but uh, you, you know the, the, the thing that... More than uh, one take. The thing that you asked... That was the uh, first take. <laughs> that was the first take, yeah? yeah? And yeah. it was brutal. Yeah. It was absolutely... I was like, no, 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 just hit me. Just, bam! Just, just oh, hit me. Fuck. <laughs> bam! <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't have to use any additional sound design in there. <laughs> but, but one thing we knew, and this is something we did discuss about Phil Noir from the beginning, is we said all the women will not only survive Stan, but thrive after. Yeah. When the material's great, when, the, when you know, your American term scene partner is amazing, then that's the fun. And you're working with one of the world's most inventive and unique cinematic voices. And I mean, God, when I saw the movie, it was like such a relief to be watching cinema again. You know, like we see a lot of things screen big, but it's not necessarily cinema. And you could feel that. You know, the production design and the, the costume design and how the meticulous, um, the art direction, you know, all of that was there. And so that often what you have to do as an actor is you have to suspend disbelief. But right from the beginning and, and all of the, those of you, you know, the actors who were in the carnival can speak to this much more than me. But just seeing the, um, the, the, the way that that had all been realised, it was all there for you. Like the way the carnival was set up, Guillermo, yeah. that you could actually move through it. I mean, you guys kind of got to live it. And I, I had that experience in the office with, with Bradley. We should build the carnival in an exterior. We don't want it to become a manicured, horrible, over-designed little thing that we shoot against green screen. And, and the first thing was because when you're out there with the wind and the, the tents breathe, like like a heart or a lung, and they go, <laughs> and it was so <laughs> dramatic. Of course, when we stopped for six months, many of those tents went away, three counties away, like <laughs> 10 miles each. They were blown away around the entire Ontario area, but we had to recuperate them. And, and the other thing is, everything that we like visually is to character. 